Now, after more than a year of killing in Ukraine, just how long will the international community keep supporting Kyiv? Well, the Foreign Secretary is proving our mettle as he makes more commitments at a G7 meeting in Japan today. But it comes as there's huge concern over what China is planning for Taiwan. Well, joining us now is the defence editor of the Evening Standard, Robert Fox. Brilliant to have you with us in the Good studio, morning. Robert. Good morning yes. to you. So James Cleverly's message is going to be quite clear, isn't it, at this meeting? It's going to be, we are going to keep backing Ukraine. I think that Britain is now becoming, certainly in the European region, if I can put it like that, the leader in saying... Uh, that they will support Ukraine because there is a very difficult decision point coming up in Ukraine, as we know, as the weather gets better. And it has been very snowy until quite recently in some parts that the offensive is going to come. We know it's going to come. Almost every briefing, secret, off the record, on the record, whatever, will tell you that. And for sure... Um, Certainly, Vladimir Zelensky thinks he's got to make progress on that. Mm. What James Cleverly is saying to his fellow members of the G7, come on, keep with the programme, because we can't afford to drop the ball on um, supporting Zelensky now. Very quickly, can I put it that there is a very odd thing about it, because if they do dial down on supporting Zelensky now, curiously it means that the war goes on and on and on and on for years. They, they can keep a low-level guerrilla war, which certainly British experts, and I think they're at the forefront on this, are saying will lead to a terrorism war. Now, a terrorism war you can't keep within borders. So you're quite right. G7, and this is where James Cleverly will lead on this, is going to face, uh, uh, face up to an actual war, Ukraine and a potential war, Taiwan-China. Yeah, OK, we'll come to Taiwan-China in, in a second because that's obviously a very significant issue. Uh, but have it, it, has there been a sense that Russia has almost been relying on a waning of support? Because this is very... What we're doing and what the international community is doing for Ukraine is very expensive. Mm -hmm. right, and do they think... Is Russia banking on us running out of money, in effect? Russia is banking on us running out of will, as, as, as you rightly say. It is expensive. But in a funny way, it isn't very, very expensive. OK, you could say, and it's a big thing with some elements of the Republican Party, as you know, in the US, $80 billion. Where does most of that $80 billion go? An awful lot of it goes back into American arms and defence industries to renew necessary parts of the defence apparatus of the US. It was something that was, that, that, was, that was going to happen. But we will hear more about that. Where is the end game? And you will hear divisions. By the way, on the two, uh, Mr Macron hasn't been helping things very much, has he? No, mm. no, that's a fair point. There has been a shift in tone, hasn't there, from from the G7 in terms of their approach to Ukraine. Last year, there was pressure, really, for Ukraine to agree to end the war and a focus on peace. And now it's a focus on support for as long as they need. What do you think that shift is about? China. Okay. It's quite clear that they had hope. And it, this is where I don't think Macron, forgive me, GB News, I don't think he was necessarily being malicious. But what is absolutely clear, he was incompetent. But what he was doing with China is that all roads to Putin, think Putin, lead through China to get him to talk. And at the moment, he's in a no, 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 not listening mode. And it's really down to China. China is so preoccupied with other things that it is not prepared to move on Ukraine. But curiously, I would say China knows that it's got to move on Ukraine because it's so committed to trade not only to the US, but to Europe, if you really start putting yourself in a bad place, which they could over Taiwan, and massive sanctions, and they are possible, that is so damaging to China at the moment. It is still very, very dependent on US and European trade. OK, well, if that's the case, then why, have, why has there been all this fuss over Taiwan of late? I mean, the US has sort of mobilised some of the stuff around Taiwan, haven't they? Some of their... their, their ships and what have you. 
There's been these fly pass and everything that, that China, the China Air Force has, has been doing. I mean, they've been upping the ante. Well, the one relates to the other. A- absolutely right. Why has China been getting so antsy about it, as you say, flying over, sailing round, saying we can cut off Taiwan? I would say I, I know no more possibly than, 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 than anything anybody can read uh, from open source in, intelligence. I think it's because it's a diversion. I think China is so preoccupied with other things, things really not going right in the economy, things not really fully recovering in the way that they would expect from COVID. Uh, The ageing population, a big underlying structural problem, and it's something that they can can focus on. And it's, it's very much part of... The Xi Stuck, you know, the package. We're going to get back Taiwan. You know, every every two or three months that he he mentions it. But um, I wonder whether they are going to push to shove and 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 do this because I really don't think China is spoiling for a war with the U.S. at the moment. Mm. It's doing an awful lot of other things: activities by submarines, looking at uh, international cables off Malaysia and so on, which is really worrying. A lot of the people we're not going to hear from with, with, with G7, like Malaysia, but particularly Vietnam. But interestingly, this time, they've invited Narendra Modi um, to the big summit of, of, of India. And Mr Albanese, the, 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 the not quite so new uh, prime minister uh, of Australia, they're on the case. But I think it will be dominated by the requirements at this level, of what Zelensky really needs. Mm. And the one thing that these leaks has shown uh, is that, actually, how pretty incompetent a lot of American thinking is about Ukraine. It's a bit of this, a bit of that, a push, you know, put one thing in, one thing out. They absolutely need air support and air defence. They will have to focus on that now. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you raised that because I was going to throw that at you, Robert. Uh, th- those throw US anything saying, at me. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, this is great thing about you, Robert, is we can, and, and you're absolutely fantastic. But uh, the US intelligence leaks this week. Mm. I mean, a 21-year-old man uh, has been arrested on, on suspicion of that, uh, allegedly leaking those those documents. Uh, but there is a real impact, isn't there, on Ukraine and the war effort there? Can I show my age? I'm supposed not to be aged. I say, absolutely ghastly. Mm. It really is. On so many aspects, as you say, Ellie, it shows the American military thinking and strategic thinking and intelligence community in such a bad light. I'm sorry, my dears. A lot of them look completely all over the place on, mm. the, on this. And when you hear the Brits resource-starved in a way, but you hear Rishi Sunak saying, this is what we're going to up the defence budget for. We have priority because we're now, again, renewed a major player in nuclear. That will come in, by the way, at the G7 with Australia, our So are very important. We're on the front foot there. And we are going to get the materiel into, um, into Ukraine. But for the Brits, I would say that they think it's embarrassing that they've revealed that there are 50 special forces, <clears throat> I should think, whatever, now special forces, probably that is a very serious underestimate, really? of, of, of not of people being in there, but people contributing in and around mm. Ukraine. Actually, it's shown the Brits rather in, in rather a good light, I think, that, that, that we're up for it, we're really thinking our way through. And that's why Britain will go in a peculiar way as a very important re- uh, representative of NATO, in the G7, because the UK, with Ben Wallace as well as James Cleverly, leads a thing called the Joint Expeditionary Force. Ten members, they're people on the front line now, the new member of NATO like Finland and the, and the Baltic countries, and they rather like the Brits doing that at the, uh, uh, mm. at the moment. I think there might be some very hard words, words some very serious talking being done in, in Japan through this rolling thing, because Japan is in the chair for G7 uh, uh, this year, it is reality check time. Mm. 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 It's yes, significant, but... though, especially, as you say, the, the notion of, of British boots on the ground. I mean, we, that's not what we were told, is it? So in, the, in these leagues, it's, it's significant. I, 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 but a covert operation. Mm. I, can, I can remember going to an occasion, it was private, in the People's Republic of Islington, where I live, and won. And the lady, who was not particularly, I, I think, on the left of the spectrum, said, I hope you're not saying we've got boots on the ground. And I said, Francis, what do you mean 
by boots on the yeah. ground. Mm -hmm. In fact, we'll have been training, we'll have been in and out. There are people that we have been part of a training mission now for 10, 15 years, and they would have stuck their noses in. We've had to have people on the ground to protect our mission there and to protect a lot of our aid going in, 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 into Ukraine. Perhaps, uh, you know, you could accuse me of being a hardened old cynic, but this is absolutely realistic. I mean, what, what are our people on the ground doing there? They're helping Ukraine. They're helping themselves. Mm -hmm. They're t saying, look, uh, to the commanders, to the government of the UK, this is what we have to think about if we're going to be involved in this kind of modern warfare. They're actually doing stuff in, in the prime interests of Britain as well as uh, helping an ally. And that's actually what Ukraine is. It's an ally. Yeah. Robert, good to see you, mm. as always. Thanks, Thanks very so much. much. Thank you both. Yeah.